Thank you very much and uh, very happy to be here for the second uh, time in this, uh, in this event. Um, my name is uh, Peter Skornians. I am uh, responsible for the IT infrastructure in, um, in Airbus. And uh, Airbus does not really need much of an introduction. Uh, the only thing I want to say here, because it's important in the rest of the presentation, is that uh, Airbus has a backlog. That means a very filled uh, order book. And um, in several surveys, uh, comes out on top as a most preferred employer, especially with uh, engineers. Now, the IT infrastructure in, um, in Airbus, um, the most important thing to remember about it is that it is big. Um, if you look at uh, the totals, just to give you an idea about some numbers, we have about uh, 370,000 users and uh, wide over uh, 10,000 servers. So it's a big infrastructure. Now, where we start uh, the story is that we realize more and more that in today's world, what is becoming the most critical factor in, uh, in competition is time. You know that after the industrial area, we went into the knowledge era where knowledge became the most important factor. And this is not the case anymore. Today, companies compete based on time. What is most important is that you come with your innovations first, that you can deliver first. And this is also very true for Airbus, uh, because as I said, we have a big backlog. We have an order book that is filled for years. So if we can build and deliver our aircraft faster, um, this is uh, actually just more money uh, that we make for, uh, for the company. So speed and, uh, and uh, moving faster is extremely important for Airbus. And this is also, of course, the case for the Airbus IT, um, because this, uh, realizing this increase in speed gives a lot of expectations from the Airbus business to the IT. So the pace of change has to increase drastically and we have to bring out innovations faster, and we have to make sure that we have the best and the most qualified people. So these are all the consequences from the fact that competition is more and more time-based. On the other hand, we have in the same time an increasing kind of mismatch. Um, when we see what we are really spending our time on, we're spending too much of our time on trying to fix the past, because everybody and in every big company has a lot of legacy uh, to support instead of building the future. And this match, mismatch is increasing due to the increase of time-based competition. So it's very important that we can refocus our energy and our uh, attention to building the future and have the fixing the past uh, be as small as possible. So, what, what we did was we used some open source projects, but not so much to, for the sake of open source only, but especially to have in general the benefits of open source, but especially to start on a new way of working, which has to speed us up and which has to be faster. And the example we picked was around IT service management, and user-centric support, which is a project that we started a little bit more than a year ago, that I reported also on here uh, last year, and that has been progressing surprisingly fast, extremely fast, as a matter of fact. So uh, this project has received followers. We now have, let's say, a little explosion of use of open source in the company, and of course we benefit from all the examples, but more important, is that it also exposes us and encourages us to change our way of working, which is the more open way of working, a way of working based on transparency, collaboration, sharing, and empowerment. And uh, for those of you working in a big traditional company, you can all testify that this is not obvious. And this will further increase our speed of change and also align us with the digitalization objectives 
for Airbus, to which I will come back later. So this little open source explosion that I mentioned is uh, actually it started all in 2008 when we started to promote the use of open source. But it was in a very shy way and not too much happened because people were not convinced that we were serious about it. And at that time, open source was not yet so well accepted as uh, for enterprise use. In the meantime, when you talk to people in uh, larger enterprises, everybody is using open source and everybody is increasing the use of open source. And our explosion really happened in uh, 2015, 2016, where we had a big increase of uh, tools, uh, usage of tools in, uh, in open source. And we actively uh, promote that. And uh, one of our example is, uh, for example, an open source contest that we organize in Airbus and that's going to take place in the next few weeks. And it's very interesting to see because the participants are not just coming from IT, they are coming from, they are coming from everywhere. A lot of them are coming from uh, engineering. You know that uh, Airbus is basically an engineering company. There is a lot of uh, avionics in the aircraft. There is a lot of IT in the aircraft. And there is a lot of IT in the building process of the, of the aircraft. So it's, it's very interesting to see how little pearls of tools that have been developed with open source that have been moving on a little bit under the radar are now popping up when you give a platform to, to show it and to demonstrate it in something like the open source contest. The open operating model, as I mentioned already, based on transparency, because transparency is like the sun, it's the best, uh, it's the best cure and it can eliminate waste. We all know about uh, big projects that go wrong because the problems show up too late and are being hidden. Empowerment is also uh, critical and is an, is an ingredient that we have lately been adding more because if you want to have top motivation of the best people, you need uh, much more empowerment. And then, of course, collaboration and sharing is clear in, in large enterprises where typically departments are a little bit separated. Working across departments and working also outside of company borders is important. So what we did to get the most out of this process is since last year not just have here and there some open source tools and to have a project but to have a model and this model we call the IT startups and in this model we try to give maximum empowerment and maximum freedom. So what we do is we take an area where we have a lot to gain and we define a very clear objective what we want to reach. And then we find uh, a leader who then assembles a team of, uh, of volunteers and gets all the means to come to these objectives in whatever way he and the team decide to go there. So the end result is always very clear. This is not research. This is not uh, freewheeling. What we want to achieve is very clear. But we have not defined how we want to achieve it. And there is the freedom of the team. And on top of that, we give a maximum empowerment and also a full accountability. So for the team, it's clear because they are working on areas that where we have a lot to gain, these areas, you could succeed or you could fail, but we want, if uh, it's not going to work, that they fail early so that they still have the chance to work on an alternative to uh, succeed. So the team is accountable. And the work in the team is outside of the organizational hierarchy and based on a natural leadership. We have now three startups inside the Airbus infrastructure. And uh, because of the success of this, we uh, probably are going to extend this in the, the near future. And these three were, let's say, a proof of concept. Is the model uh, repeatable? 
The first one is about IT service tools. This is what I also reported on last year here. Is to have a better tooling for the IT infrastructure and to provide an end user support that is what we call user centric. The second uh, startup is uh, what we is uh, AirCloud. So this is a um, hybrid cloud based on uh, OpenStack, which is uh, live for the private part and will go live uh, by the end of the year for the public part, where we can choose, depending on the characteristic, to host in the private part or in the public part of the hybrid cloud. And a third one is the transversal monitoring. We do have a lot of monitoring in the, in the Airbus uh, IT systems, but uh, they are not interconnected. And because they are not so well interconnected, uh, problems occur uh, in between the solutions. And this transversal monitoring has to solve that and is also using all open source tools for that. So we have noticed that in this IT startup mode, the, the speed of delivering solutions is more, than, is more than the double. And this is exactly what we want to achieve. So there are also outside of the Airbus IT, a lot of exper uh, experiments in other areas with different way of working. But at the end of the day, they are all based on small teams, more empowerment, more freedom in the way of working, and uh, less, uh, less hierarchy. So these experiments show us that this is the way, the way ahead. Uh, another uh, point that I would like to bring up here on the open source is that, uh, you know, we always discuss about open source or closed software. And I think that in the next years, the discussion is going to shift more because uh, things are less about a competition with closed software. All the successful closed software providers are moving to a software as a service model. And in the open source, um, we have to think about how to compete with uh, such model. Because for large uh, companies, the software as a service model is, is very attractive. It has um, a lot of characteristics that push large enterprises to there. And of course, open source, as in the uh, example here, can be a good alternative, but then it has to be adapted to that choice of software as a service or open source. You have more possibilities, you have more freedom, you have less risk, but also more work to do. And this will be probably more of the competition than between uh, open source and uh, closed source. I said I was going to come back to the Airbus digitalization. What is it? It is a, a program started by uh, our CEO, Tom Enders, um, um, almost two years ago to transform the company into uh, a digital company. And what uh, the ambition of this was uh, five things. Uh, first of all, uh, a high employee engagement. Secondly, a digital operational excellence. Thirdly, turning product data into insight, capturing end customer experience and business agility. And if you analyze these statements, you will see that um, three of them are about speed, which was the starting point of the discussion. One is about engagement, which is a very important element in this entire journey. And the uh, two last are about innovation. So if we look at what we want to achieve, engagement, speed, and uh, innovation, Let's have a little look at how open source can help us with this. So first we say we do more and more open source mainly because it introduces us to the open way of working, which we have demonstrated in the IT startups. Then also in the IT startups, we maximize freedom for the, for the teams because in many areas, open source is more innovating then uh, closed source, we can win on that. And because we can focus more on the added value and are less bothered by 
uh, vendor lock-in. So on the second level, this increases motivation, it increases speed and agility, it allows us to have secure solutions and to reduce cost, which is more the classical uh, topic, and therefore it supports our company objectives, which is competitiveness and digitalization, and it provides a more fulfillment for the people who are working in this because it increases their satisfaction, happiness, and uh, performance. And this is where I would like to conclude making the step from open source to the open way of working where empowerment and freedom means performance and happiness. Thank you very much. Thank you.